Hurricane Aaron is about to cause a lot of problems along the east coast of the United States as it becomes a larger hurricane. This includes the threat of rip currents that could be very life-threatening. Additionally, we are expecting very high wave heights as high as 100 feet just offshore of the United States. And on top of that, we already have tropical storm warnings in effect for parts of North Carolina ahead of Hurricane Aaron. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Aaron and what impacts it's exactly going to bring. We're going to begin with what Hurricane Aaron looks like right now on infrared imagery this afternoon, and you can see that this is not as impressive of a hurricane as it was a couple of days ago. This is no longer a Category 5 hurricane. In fact, it is all the way down to a Category 2 hurricane now, just to the east of the Bahamas. And the reason why is because look at this right here. This is all just sheared off. We've had very strong wind shear here just to the east of the Bahamas that has led the eye to be completely exposed. And we basically have our area of circulation right here so the entire western half of this hurricane has completely died out at this point but that does not mean this is necessarily much weaker when it comes to the wind speeds because the tropical storm force winds are still reaching all the way out towards the bahamas and this is a very large wind field which means as this continues to track to the north we are likely going to see impacts in areas like north carolina and virginia and here's a closer view of hurricane Aaron, and this is actually kind of interesting because over the last hour or so we've seen a big convective blow up right in the center of Hurricane Aaron and if this is able to consolidate we actually could see a new eye form over the next 24 hours which could lead to a brief period of intensification with Hurricane Aaron. The biggest problem that it is currently facing though is all of the wind shear that has sheared off the entire western half here of this hurricane but I do think there is still a chance that this could at least briefly become a major hurricane again as it continues to track to the north in the Atlantic Ocean. This also look at visible satellite imagery another crazy look at this again you can see how low the cloud tops are here on the west half of this hurricane very tall clouds on the east side and then obviously right here is the eye the eye was exposed at one point because of the wind shear it actually was visible just by looking at the very low clouds there now it is covered over by very high cumulonimbus clouds which means that this is attempting to re-intensify again as it tracks to the north now, i do want to point out that hurricane Aaron is becoming a much larger hurricane and what i mean by that is that the wind field is growing exponentially in size compared to what it was just a few days ago because when this was a category 5 hurricane our hurricane force wind field was tiny comparatively to what it is now and this is also a much weaker hurricane now it's about 55 miles per hour weaker when it comes to our overall maximum wind speeds but the size of it keeps growing and as it continues to track to the north it is going to keep growing that is why north carolina is going to see some impacts out of hurricane Aaron, including very dangerous rip currents which basically the entire east coast will be seeing and on top of that we are expecting the threat of beach erosion and tropical storm force winds now let's talk more about the timing and the impacts out of hurricane Hurricane Aaron, beginning with what's happening on Wednesday. So this will be quickly approaching the North Carolina coastline Wednesday night, and this will be the beginning of storm surge and high waves, especially back over North Carolina and Virginia on the north side of this hurricane. As we go into early Thursday morning, that is when this is going to be the closest to North Carolina, and notice how close it is. We are going to see some of the outer bands of Hurricane Aaron reaching the Cape Hatteras area, which is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. I don't expect any flooding really or anything like that, but the storm surge and the very high wave heights are going to be the biggest concerns in these areas which will lead to beach erosion and we already have mandatory evacuation orders in place for some of the islands back over near Cape Hatteras. As we go into late Thursday this continues to track to the northeast we'll likely start to see wave heights increasing back over in southern uh, New England as we go into Thursday night and Friday morning and then eventually into Saturday into Sunday this is off to sea. That does not mean though the impacts are done there because we are going to continue to see life-threatening rip currents all the way through this weekend from New New England all the way back into Florida we had over 100 water rescues yesterday because of rip currents and on top of that there's at least one fatality that was confirmed from this event yesterday and we are only expecting this to get worse when it comes to rip currents they are very dangerous please make sure if you're at the beach you are taking it very seriously it's probably best if you just don't swim with how intense the rip currents are going to be over the next several days and this is also a simulated look at our infrared imagery over the next few days and you can see the outer bands will be reaching the North Carolina coastline as we go on a Thursday morning. Eye of the hurricane will still be well offshore, but this is at least going to lead to some rainfall, and obviously the high wave heights and storm surge are all going to be in play throughout the daytime on Thursday. On Friday, we could even see some of the outer bands reaching Cape Cod and even in southeast Massachusetts, so there could be some rain. I also want to point out behind this hurricane, there's going to be much colder weather for areas like the Northern Plains, Midwest, and the Northeast. We'll talk more about that here in a few minutes, which is really good news. We're going to get our first signs of fall here in some areas. Now let's talk more about the impacts that Hurricane Aaron will be 
be bringing, beginning with our rip current risk, which is going to be affecting places from Miami, Florida, all the way back into Long Island. We'll also have a potential for rip currents just over the next 48 hours, as far north as Maine, and even back over into New Hampshire. So again, it's a good idea if you're at the beach, make sure that you're checking the flag at the beach to make sure you know how bad the rip currents are. It's more than likely going to be a situation where we're going to have unswimmable conditions from North Carolina back towards Daytona Beach, Florida. Surfing is obviously something that is still something that's ongoing, and most counties do not care if you're surfing, but obviously make sure that you know that there's a risk. If you go into the water, it is very dangerous, especially with the rip current threat that we currently have. And more localized impacts are anticipated out of Hurricane Aaron, and that does include the storm surge risk back over in the Carolinas and Virginia. We are currently expecting at least one to three feet of storm surge from the South Sante River in South Carolina, all the way back up towards Paramore Island over here in Virginia. And then also two to four feet of storm surge is anticipated from Cape Lookout back through Duck, which is right in Cape Hatteras. And this is an area that beach erosion is likely, especially if we have a very strong high pressure system back up in Nova Scotia and a very strong low pressure system, which is our hurricane just east of North Carolina. That would actually be able to create the potential for very significant beach erosion. So that's something that we need to keep a very close eye on. And unfortunately, there is a good possibility that there will be some significant beach erosion here over in Cape Hatteras. And on top of all of this, the wave heights are going to be very high over the next few days. This is a simulation of our wave heights back over near Florida, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Obviously, the highest waves are going to remain offshore, but even over the next 24 to 48 hours, we can expect wave heights to be really higher, especially back over in Florida. They could get as high as 10 feet over near the Treasure Coast. And then as we go into Thursday, the wave heights are going to increase if you're back over in North Carolina. Look how high the waves could be just offshore from Cape Hatteras, perhaps 20 to 30 feet, only about 5, 10 miles to the east of Cape Hatteras. And if you go very far offshore, that is an area that we are anticipating 50 to 100 foot waves back over in the Atlantic Ocean. So obviously cruise ships or any other types of boating that's happening anywhere just off the East Coast is going to be relatively dangerous. And a lot of cruise ships have already canceled their trips towards areas like Bermuda because of Hurricane Aaron. And then as we go into Friday, the wave heights will increase if you're back over in Cape Cod, also in southern New England. And that is when we're anticipating rip currents to also increase. And then we should be back to normal as we go into Monday and Tuesday before eventually our next tropical systems are coming this direction. And another problem that Hurricane Aaron is going to bring are the winds. And we are anticipating wind gusts as high as 60 to 75 miles per hour back over in Cape Hatteras. This will likely lead to isolated power outages late Wednesday into early Thursday. This is also very close to hurricane force wind gusts. So that'll be something that'll be very close, I think, as we go into late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. And then wind gusts anywhere from Cape Cod and Boston, Massachusetts, back over into southern North Carolina are forecasted to peak around 35 to 50 miles per hour. So that'll at least make it windy on Thursday, but I don't anticipate really any power outages with wind gusts around that, unless you are in an area that is prone to power outages with wind gusts under 50 miles per hour. Also, this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center regarding where Hurricane Aaron is going to go. And despite this still being fairly offshore from the United States, it is still going to bring impacts, as we've already alluded to over the last several days. Rip currents, honestly, I was kind of surprised. We had over 100 people rescued yesterday from rip currents across the East Coast. This is something that should not be happening. Please make sure that you're taking this seriously. I know Hurricane Aaron is not that close to the United States, but it is obviously still causing problems, and there is a need for this video because people are not taking it seriously at the beaches. As we go into Thursday and to Friday, it will turn to the Northeast. It is not going to really impact Bermuda a whole lot, which is actually pretty surprising because a lot of the early initiations with this hurricane a few days ago were indicating that this was going to hit Bermuda pretty hard. It has gone much further to the West, and we've been pretty on point with this forecast, honestly, for the last five to seven days. We've been talking about how this is probably going to take a westerly path. It has this entire time. It's obviously not making landfall, but it is definitely going to bring some impacts. So be ready if you're back over in the Carolinas or Virginia. And speaking of those upcoming tropical threats, we have a lot more areas of development now in the Atlantic Ocean. We are keeping an eye on another tropical wave that is currently developing in the central Atlantic Ocean back over in the main development region. This is expected to track kind of in the same direction as Hurricane Aaron. However, if it does take a more southerly path, which is entirely possible, this would be more than likely becoming our next hurricane, and that would almost undoubtedly move towards the United States if it did go more to the west northwest. If it does go more in the direction of where Hurricane Aaron is, it will also likely turn out to sea. So there's a couple scenarios as of right now. No reason to panic about this one for now, but this is definitely something we need to keep an eye on over the next few days. And then another tropical wave is coming off the coast of Africa. This will also likely become a tropical system sometime in the next seven to ten days as it continues to track to the west. Now, something that's also crazy is that we are anticipating a cold blast as we go into this weekend and next week across the lower 48. 
a huge pocket of cold air is going to usher in behind a intense low pressure system back up in Canada, which is going to bring our first kind of feeling of fall as we go into the early portion of next week. We're going to go way more in detail about this in our next forecast, but this is a little preview of what will be happening. Sunday afternoon, our high temperatures in the Midwest will only be in the 60s. We could even have some upper 50s in northern Wisconsin in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Low temperatures Monday morning. Look at this. We are talking about temperatures down into the 40s. We could even have some upper 30s out there. So very cold weather is ahead. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely have another video tomorrow talking about Hurricane Aaron. And if it does track any further to the west, there is a chance of live hurricane coverage as we go into Wednesday night or Thursday. So click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video.